Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we begin with a rather desperate attempt to save this thing. Now the overwhelming suggestion was to turn off the top two engines and uh, just run the bottom two engines and see if it'll flip it. And of course the center mass, well that, that's a good point though. The center mass is rather high. We've got this full fuel tank here and this one's mostly empty. So right now the center mass is probably around here. Actually, uh, since the camera automatically centers on the center of mass, it's right around here, I think. So, um, that might not give us enough leverage. I think I'm going to need to move the fuel down from here, which is, well, well, let, let's just do it. Uh, it's probably a bad idea, you know, like most things. Now you can see the camera is actually moving more to this side. Alright, but now we've got all our fuel down here when we wanted it up here. <laughs> so that's not great, but that'll give us more leverage. We should have RCS on, SAS off. Okay. And then, well, uh, what can I say? Here goes nothing. Um... <laughs> Okay, oh, 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 fudge. I'm gonna need some practice with this. Uh, it's an intro. Okay, so, so we can do that, but the problem is I don't have the other two engines action moved. And we obviously took that too far there. Okay, the fuel has been moved, and so we're ready to go again. Um, RCS is on, SAS is off. Uh, I don't know how much of this I can... Without the fuel up here, I mean, it'd be nice if we could just tilt and then eject off. But, uh, I don't think I can keep enough fuel here to make it work out. Actually, uh, this stage has enough delta V right now to potentially make orbit. Uh, but of course we have to find a way to activate these two engines. And that's trickier than it might at first seem. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, no, 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 hold on. Um, oh boy. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I just need a few, few seconds to transfer the fuel, maybe, I don't know, um, come on, come up, 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 I just need to go straight up for a while. <laughs> this is probably not very efficient, but we had 400, uh, left over, so, okay, um, in, in, unlock, unlock, uh, <laughs> Okay, tilt up, tilt up. Uh, I just want to go straight up because I don't remember whether... I think we're probably going retrograde. If I don't remember for sure. Okay, well there's a shot. What can I say? Um, the, that's the leftover decoupler, right? Okay. Okay, uh, let's go straight up. Then we'll dump this stage. And then we'll continue on. So, thank you for the advice, folks. Uh, it looks like this might work. Time to wap waps, this is rather high. <laughs> but uh, that's alright, that's alright. Okay. 
Uh, Sep. Waiting for something to actually Sep. Uh, let me man manually decouple. Okay, and then those are active. All right. Now, which way were we going? Uh, let's target. Well, now everything's probably out of phase. Our target is way over there. But going this way, right? Ten panels. That one's broken. Somebody had suggested using the panels, but yeah, they break very easily. Okay, looking good. We did have Alan step out briefly, but we couldn't do very much. I'm trying to see how much we can uh, fix the inclination now. We, we're not too far away from the descending node there. Assuming that's the right location. So maybe we should do it quicker rather than uh, later. Because we're just getting further and further away from it. So tilting a bit further north. And we see we're below one degree difference. Looks like 0.5 degrees is about as much as we can do. Okay, uh, well, it has a close approach distance of 50, but where is that? Uh, that's probably at some non-existent point, isn't it? Typical. That should get us a rendezvous in a few orbits. Uh, we're closing by 500 kilometers per orbit, so three orbits will do the trick. Or a little bit over three orbits. A uh, 30 kilometer periapsis should be fine around the moon, I think. Should be safe. Alright, so let's wait. It's a two hour orbit, so we're talking about six hours. Okay, 1.2 kilometers. The burn is in an hour and 16 minutes, and it's 23 meters per second, which is fine. Good times. I feel like uh, there's a cause for celebration, but, you know, we actually have to get back home, so let's hold off on that. Crude duration record of seven days. We need to stay in space for seven days, but they reset the timer because these guys landed on the surface of the moon. I don't think that's quite f fair, is it? I mean, well, no, I guess they checked it off. I don't understand what this time to completion thing is then. Okay, here we go for the rendezvous burn. As with everything else, this thing has a heck of a time trying to just point at the node. Alright, two kilometers is fine. I'll take two kilometers. We'll, we'll do it. Let's go. Okay, velocity difference with target is 13.2 meters per second. Okay, good news. It appears that we do have communication with the uncrewed piece of the puzzle, which is our transfer stage. And it looks like it has 1,748 without the rest of the thing. We'll see how much it has in a moment, but let's have it carefully, carefully turn towards our approaching vessel. Now, of course, uh, the approaching capsule already has some delta V to work with, so that'll be good. I have to keep in mind the 1.25 second delay. This is four tons. We have uh, 878 aerosene, let's use that as a number, and then 1,746 meters per second here. Here, this is three tons, so that's good. Oh, heck, where is it pointing? Um, why was it not pointing at the target? I had left it pointed at the target. That's peculiar. Okay, I'll tell you what. 
uh, smart ASS off. Let's just go with negative parallel. Well, yeah, smart ASS negative parallel and fix it like that. Um, here, Arizine, we have only 229. So it's interesting. Uh, here, it says closest approach distance 1.1. We switch vessels to here, it says 31.1. That is an odd discrepancy, isn't it? Well, now they're pointed right at each other, and this one, the closest approach distance, says 26. I'm pretty sure that's wrong. I'm pretty sure they're going to get closer to each other than 30, uh, 26 meters. Oh, now it says 6 suddenly. I don't know. Probably shouldn't trust it too much, huh? Close approach distance now, well, briefly read less than 100 millimeters. Now, more than that, but... it seems to think we're getting close I think my complaints got to it finally uh... well we're not quite on the button there as usual it's a question of how much magnetism I can expect and we have enough magnetism alright straight in all good all right, let's make sure uh, the correct engines get shut down. Doesn't help us to have these on right now. I mean, I suppose, well, we want the solar panels and everything on this side, though, including the fuel cell fuel. We want all that, those bits. So we're, we could, in theory, transfer the fuel from here into here, but I don't want to dump all that. And from here on out, we'll be running the fuel cells full tilt. So that one's active. Let's check on the other one. That one's active. Okay. It's currently nighttime over here, so we're losing electric charge still because it requires all the things. So, yeah. 1077 should get us back home. Okay, we have our plot. I'm just going to hope that smart ASS can turn us to the node and it looks like our stage time is a minute it's gonna cost 795.8 meters per second out of 1076 that we have really all that's left is the is the heat shield that's the main question. We'll double check the parachutes before we come down and open them. If you really want to, of course, these little guys could have been replaced by an Estes engine, or Astros engine, or a couple of Astros engines. The only issue is the size of the fairing and just the bulk of those engines. But yeah, I mean, we, don't, we didn't need the high thrust weight ratio with this. Could have easily done with an asterisk instead. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see that periapsis number. Well, it's only six digits now. Oh, it got lost. Okay. No, no, uh, well, stay prograde, actually. We can get that back. There it is. Get rid of the maneuver. We'll make further adjustments. But let's set to 60-ish kilometers. Seems all right. Yeah, well, it's it's gone to 70 now. Okay, SAS instead, maybe. All right, we're on our way back. We'll keep everything intact. Our electric charge is replenishing. I think we have plenty of hydrogen and oxygen for the fuel cell. Life support. Uh, seven days of food, 12 days of water, eight days of oxygen. And we are going to be back. Uh, our periapsis is in four days and 21 hours, so we're good there too. Okay, and let me just make sure CO2 scrubbing is occurring. It is, it's active. Reviewing stored data, we've got EVA report from Moon's major craters. We've got EVA report while in space near the Moon. 
and a surface sample, very important. I am not going to transmit any of it. I intend to bring them back safely. Let's check the parachutes now. Uh, let's not wait. Um, 0.2 atmospheres and then deployment at uh, 2,500 meters for the drogue chute. That seems reasonable. I'll uh, I'll even up it to 2.4 maybe. Can't be two other chutes. The main chute. 0.3 and 700 are my normal numbers, so no problems there. Okay, you can tell I'm apprehensive, but here we go. Well, let's try 60. Uh, I was going to go with 62.5, but it's it's wobbling a bit. Let me turn the RCS off. Uh, 65. Hmm. Sixty-three point six. You know what? I'm gonna F five here. I'm gonna F five. Okay, let's proceed. We've got we've got delta v to work with if we wanted to, but I think we should do this as straight as possible. So I'm not going to use the engine power to try and slow down. Two hundred is not much anyway. Though we could shift the fuel over there, and then probably got get more delta v over into the pods service module got a weird sort of barbecue roll going like charge is great liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are being depleted at nominal rates okay at this point I would like to get rid of this portion of the mission so I'm going to pump the rest of fuel into the service module okay and that's probably good enough undock. We'll correct our periapsis now. Gotta turn the light on the docking port off. We're still quite a ways away from Earth. Now if we were angled directly with the solar panels facing the Sun we would have a good electric charge situation. We would be recharging. But right now we've got a draw of 0.02 per second which is not a problem I don't think. Not with the uh, electric charge full up like that. Okay, uh, 63.6 I'll keep it at. We are passing over Australia, aim for the South Pacific here. Possibly ending up in the South Atlantic actually, not the most convenient place. Okay, around here I'm going to Alt F5 I can? No, I guess I can't. Okay. Maybe we should just F5 before we dump the service module. Make sure everything we can pump up is pumped up. Well, we can uh, move up the hydrogen and oxygen into the capsule. Okay, service module decoupled. So now we have a Soyuz heat shield, which said it was a lunar rated heat shield. Let's hope. Let's hope. Remember, our re entry test before was not from a lunar trajectory. Not arm parachute, I just want to unlock these. But arm parachute is not a bad idea. Let's start doing that. Atmospheric interface. Angling around. Making sure the horizon is up. Because I believe that is the correct orientation. And we will set roll to that. The explosion of the service module and other bits. It's always disconcerting, of course. Alright, I'm gonna stop it from holding pitch now. Just have it hold roll, if possible. Though it seems to be maxing that out. That's the heat shield. I don't like it saying that's overheating. This is a fairly mild lunar return. I mean, we could do more extreme lunar returns, so... 
Hoping the fact that it said Lunar Rated Heat Shield was not a lie. We're at 2.2ish uh, Gs, but we're going up now, so we're not uh, hitting the worst of it yet. It looks like we're probably going to go around again. Yeah, the descent mode, my normal periapsis doesn't work very well with descent mode on. Guess we had to aim lower. We burned off about a thousand meters per second, and next time around, we'll burn off more than that. I think I'm gonna go with 62 kilometers. I'm not gonna take anything less than 60, but... Yeah. Uh, as far as RCS is concerned, we're okay, I suppose? Okay, so I'll bring the periapsis up a little bit. Once we get to Apoapsis, overall period's three hours. We've still got plenty of food. We've got two days, call it two and a half days. 60.5? Well, that should certainly get us down, but is it safe? I don't know. I mean, keep in mind, we lost about a third of our ablator, and we did see the overheating indicator on the heat shield. So it's not like I pick 63.6 from an overabundance of caution. Um, let's just go with 62.5. Looks like we're more likely to splash down in the South Pacific this time. Crossing Australia now. We seem to have a persistent roll. We're already in the atmosphere. Let me try and have it focus on the roll here. Uh, it's not really slowing that roll down. Mm, once I activate pitch and yaw, it's just not good. Okay. Stop, stop, stop. Stop rolling. Otherwise, descent mode's not going to work right. Okay, 68 kilometers. Still got about 1,200 meters per second to burn off to make us suborbital. About 400 meters per second left to ball, uh, burn off in order to make us suborbital. Okay, it looks like we will come down even though we're briefly going up here. So that's good. A blader seems to be fine. We used half of it so far. Of course, uh, the first approach when you're going at your fastest is when the ablator will really lead off. Interesting that the uh, ablator is not getting turned into charred ablator. That's rather strange. So this Soyuz heat shield is apparently not properly configured to turn the ablator into charred ablator. I'll have to check up on that. Actually, uh, the Soyuz heat shield almost has used up all of its ablator, but I had kept the ablator on the Gemini cabin itself just in case. Probably a good idea just for center of mass issues, I think. Okay, we are finally going down again. We reached an apoapsis of 82 kilometers. We burned off some velocity on the way up, but now we'll be coming sharply down, I suppose. Okay, we're starting to get heat effects at 68 kilometers, 6,400 meters per second, uh, 0.8, 0 0.9 Gs now. Still rocking back and forth with Smart ASS trying to hold the roll. Probably SAS would be better, but I'm not going to switch it now. And we likely have enough RCS fuel to deal with it. One question mark is the ablator, which we only have 25 units of on this Soyuz heat shield now. Ablation rate is increasing. 58 kilometers, 5,800 meters per second. Okay, ablation rate is decreasing, but it's still going away pretty fast. 20 units of ablator, 54 kilometers, 5,400 meters per second. 50 kilometers, 15 units of ablator, approaching 4Gs. 4,000 meters per second, 4.18 Gs, 46 kilometers. Flame effects dying down, 4.2 Gs, looks like the peak. 
still going 3,200 meters per second at 43 kilometers, 10 units of ablator. But it looks like we are not going to actually run out of ablator on this one. Pretty close though. But then again, there was the pod underneath which also has ablators, so we have that backup. Though that ablator is not, you know, lunar rated, still we weren't going at those kinds of speeds, so it in theory, if this one blew up, we would still have been alright, hopefully. Okay, 2Gs, Smart ASS off. Descent mode off. Joan and Alan were excited before, but now they are looking a little bit concerned. Don't know why. Always, I'm always concerned that the Kerbals know more than I do about the situation. Full parachute deployment brings us to uh, 5 minutes per second, which I believe was the same as during the test, so no change there. That looks like pretty murky water. It is water. This is the South Pacific, but that's very brown. Very brown. We need to take care of our oceans, folks. This is not acceptable. Okay, splash down, and before the game decides to do something nasty, recover. Okay, so 427.5 science earned, parts, we got 5,000 funds back for that, and of course our two Kerbals are ready to go again. Uh, let's take a look at completed missions, so I guess, um, uh, okay, um, lunar flyby. I don't know where. I'm, no, uh, where's the crude lunar landing thing? Did did we not have a contract for that? We might not have even had a contract for that, huh? Yeah, apparently the landing we did not have a contract for. Okay, well we sorta of did it. I don't think we can be satisfied with saying that uh, we beat Apollo, though, considering what happened on the moon itself, but. December 31st, 1968, we still have some time to rerun the mission with some better equipment. Well, just uh, lander legs would be really helpful right now. You can see we complete landing in 98 days. I don't know if that gives us enough time, but even then, the lander legs it gives us are, um, you know, the tiny ones. So, where is landing in here anyway? Uh, Short-term habitation is there, mature capsules, landing, 120 science. Uh, those little landing legs, micro landing struts, just the micro landing struts, on the same level as these Hydrolox engines and like heavy orbital rocketry. If you want real landing struts, uh, those, those serious landing struts, that's uh, 160 science technology. I'm talking about uh, heftier stuff, specialized construction equivalent. Okay, but it looks like the next thing we should do is to try and build a rocket to Mars. Uh, we've only got 43, uh, 43 days for that, and that's a little bit tight, but we need to take care of that Deimos landing mission. We That's all we need to do, so it's not going to be like a big package mission. We could probably launch a relatively light rocket and so we might be able to build it in 43 days but I'll, I'll reserve I'll reserve that for the next episode we'll take a look at what kind of rocket I build and what we can get over there and maybe what science I want to unlock with the science points that the data points that we have acquired but I think we've had enough excitement for one episode so I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this episode if you did enjoy this episode please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.